I know when I'm outmatched. <laughs> um, my name's Dave Rixon. Um, I am from Western Nevada College in Carson City, Nevada. Um, and I work with these two on the side, Dr. Warren Gilkey, who is out of the College of Southern Nevada in Las Vegas. And Deborah Bolvaire, who is with UMass Boston and is the principal investigator for Baytech. Uh, one of the co-sponsors of the, of the project. And we're here to talk today about what we branded as, <laughs> sorry, I'm tethered, um, as uh, content in context. We've heard several times today and many of us many times over the last bunch of years that soft skills are becoming more and more critical and more important for employee, employability, staying on the job. A uh, gentleman this morning said, you know, I've never had anybody, you know, come back saying, well, we had to let this person go because they didn't have the tech skills, right? It's the soft skills that, that are becoming more and more critical. So what content in context is, is fundamentally bringing those skills to the forefront in a technical classroom. As technical faculty, you know, we all know we have a stack of content that we have to get through. All of the nuts and bolts of, of the course, right? Whether it's a networking course, a programming course, regardless, we all have this massive stack of content that we have to push through. Somebody comes in and says, oh, and by the way, you have to keep soft skills along with that, right? It's not going to happen. We know that's not going to happen. But what if instead of having to add additional content to soft skills, what if you just change your delivery method on the tech skills? Just alter it. Put it into the context of a business environment instead of the classroom environment. Bring it both out, bring both of those concepts, hard skills and soft skills, out together. Evaluate them together. Show the student the importance of those soft skills incorporated with the hard skills. We heard them talking about it right this morning. About who's going to talk about some of the background that this all you know, stems from. Thank you, Dave. A little background uh, update here. And this, this has uh, evolved over uh, the past multiple years actually, uh, there are a handful of uh, motivating factors here that got us into context, content in context, as Dave has just mentioned. And uh, we dubbed this uh, a general term, soft skills, which we all know as employability skills, emotional IQ, professional skills. Uh, there are different names there, but that's, uh, the reason we originally named it soft skills is our business and industry partners in the state of Nevada kept talking about this over the years, clear back from a detailed 2007 report. This was a, a relatively recent report statewide that was conducted that was really the, the basis for everything that we're doing. And then the supporting documents here really reinforce the idea of, well, you know, something we were presenting on uh, uh, Cisco certification, Microsoft certification, 
uh, wireless communications, the whole gamut, telecommunications, web design. Uh, these were uh, based on uh, probably one of the largest uh, uh, business and industry partnerships in the United States. We have over 350 uh, what we call TEBA, Technology Education Bus Business Alliance of members, specifically in IT, that guide us uh, on our curriculum, uh, professional development. And for the first time uh, in my experience over 20 years at the College of Southern Nevada, uh, if you were to plot uh, these employability skills, soft skills, as a function of time, they now exceed the technical skills. How are we going to get this across to our faculty members? Uh, when ourselves, we, we may be lacking those soft skills. In fact, I was just telling Deborah, I got to spit off my chewing gum before I come in here. So anyhow, uh, these really motivated us to conduct workshops, so not necessarily to teach uh, soft skills or employability skills, but to create an awareness of what our students really need to know uh, if they want to get hired. Uh, the employability skills, this is based on the state of Virginia, almost per verbatim is our uh, 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 Nevada uh, Department of Education standards, the DOL, Department of Labor competency model, the lower three layers, if you look at that, specifically soft skills, and uh, the previous uh, uh, extensive uh, statewide report that was conducted back in 2000 said that started to bring up these employability skills that we really, we, we need more than technical skills. So now more than ever before, uh, uh, we felt the need to maybe start conducting workshops to create that awareness among faculty statewide, statewide meeting the state of Nevada. And that's uh, uh, evolved to what we're doing today, uh, thanks to, to Deborah and Dave and, and other members of the Bay Tech group. Uh, this workforce study was conducted by the Ellison Group, uh, Terrell Bailey, independent consulting organization that we hired to, to do this uh, statewide study for technical and all, all of the skills under the umbrella of information and communications technology. We had 84 employers participate in the qualitative and quantitative study and a follow-up skills survey. Uh, here are some of the key findings. Uh, there is, as always, uh, enthusiastic uh, engagement uh, among these 350 plus members uh, uh, in IT that support our needs in terms of professional development and guidance and curriculum. Uh, certification, uh, I think we've all seen this, uh, that's quite uh, ubiquitous. Uh, uh, high demand jobs, at least in the state of Nevada, and uh, we saw last year a lot of this, uh, some of the keynotes were in cloud computing and big data. Aerospace with Nellis Air Force Base we've got in southern Nevada, they're home of the Thunderbirds, so and a huge employer in addition to the gaming industry. Uh, uh, IP version 6, telecom services, uh, X is a service of uh, uh, RF and microwave, radar programming, web design and convergence technologies. Uh, 84 technical and professional skills were ranked in, in many of these areas that you see, see here as part of the key findings here. And really what came up in the qualitative and quantitative study was, uh, in a nutshell, and I'm quoting from one of our business and industry partners, we're not going to hire your students even with a 4.0 GPA, whether they're from the College of Southern Nevada, the university, uh, we really need them to have soft skills. And you heard that this morning from both of our keynote speakers. Uh, from uh, Robert Half Technologies in uh, Europe, is that they, they really need soft skills. Uh, and Robert Half Technologies, I believe, is one of the largest employers, if not the largest, in the United States for contracting out IT folks. They're big in Southern Nevada as well. And you heard what he said, is that uh, rarely or never does anybody come back saying, you know, they're lacking technical skills. It's communications, teamwork, attitude, problem solving, ethics, and so on and so forth. Uh, even in my last two workshops with uh, Deborah and Chuck, uh, they had mentioned the importance of soft skills uh, within the context, as Dave was mentioning, of what our professional uh, uh, environments uh, are asking for where our students go to work. Yeah. 
and the one uh, video clip there that you showed, Chuck, on YouTube uh, with the uh, Google, uh, it wasn't a CEO, it was uh, one of the chief engineers there, IBM as well. Uh, uh, during the interview process, uh, he had mentioned uh, they're not so concerned about technical skills. They're more concerned about uh, two things, communications and teamwork is what he said. Now, the IBM CIO had mentioned communications, teamwork, and it wasn't attitude, or business and industry people rank attitude as the highest uh, soft skill attribute that they're looking for, uh, listening skills. So uh, this is the first time I've been at MPIC uh, or Bay Tech Conference where the keynote speakers really emphasize something that we're trying to emphasize here, but we've got to get this across to our students. So this is vitally important to us, but again, that, that prompts the question, how do we get this out to our students when ourselves we, we need to know what is it that they're looking for? And so this happened to capture my eye during the interim is, look at this Forbes uh, report here. And we're seeing more and more of these reports throughout the United States. The first top four here is what they talked about uh, this morning in some of the workshops. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Department of Labor uh, competency model. If you look at the, the lower three layers there on teamwork, uh, uh, reading, writing, uh, a lot of these are soft skills, if not all of them. And if you go to the website uh, uh, for the DOL IT competency model and hover your, your mouse pointer there, there's a tremendous amount of information there. And MPIC and Bay Tech and other centers are populating the, uh, the fourth layer, I believe. So a lot of this is completed right now, to my knowledge. So you might want to take advantage of that by showing your students that in all areas. As Warren pointed out, this board is still all around. Hold on. We're, we're beginning to see, you know, everybody's beginning to recognize, you know, we really do need to start emphasizing this. But, as I pointed out before, we're not going to be able to fit additional content into our semester. It's just not going to happen. So what we need to start doing is functionally remodeling how we look at and treat assignments. Now, what I've just brought up, this is straight out of the, the Cisco Networking Academy program, okay? This is one of the labs that the Cisco Networking Academy, how many are within or familiar? Okay. So this is one of the new ones out of the new curriculum. That's been fun, hasn't it? Um, and this is, but this is typical. I mean, this is, this is a standard idea of within a technical environment, here's an assignment, right? A um, little bit of background, addressing table, okay, the objectives, what we're trying to do, the scenario, right? The requirements is what you got to build out. That's all well and good. This has absolutely zero soft skills in it, right? It's very well presented, very, very, very direct on the tech skills. But I, you know, I can attest to the fact I have had employers come back to me saying, Dave, you guys do really good turning out technically competent people. Can you get them to know how to answer a phone or write a letter or an email? You know, it, it, it's the real world today. Okay. So we need to rethink this assignment. We can do all of this. All of this technical content can be reworked, redesigned, and put into an environment where students have to emphasize and focus on soft skills as well. Okay? Now, I'm going to apologize because the example that when we go back to the point is not going to mirror what we have here. I wish it did, okay? And I will work on that for the next one. But it's going to be a different assignment, 
and I'm going to see. I think we probably have some time to do at least phase one, don't you think? We can try it. I think we have enough time for phase one. I don't want to don't want to shortchange everything that we kind of wanted to put into this. <laughs> Does everybody understand what the drive behind this is? Now, content in context is you know an organization or a, a, a system whereby we've done. Uh, already a, a trial run. Our first one was in Las Vegas. Um, Deborah and I have done uh, one of the three workshops necessary in Cleveland. Okay, so this is a this is a course that we actually come to a, an area and we show instructors how to take this concept and twist it into a situation where your students are going to get the benefit of soft skills training while getting the tech skills training. Oh, duh, MPIC sponsored us <laughs> on, the, uh, on the, the Los Angeles, Southern California. Yeah, I completely spaced that one last summer, last summer. Um, Deborah? There you go. I'll move closer. Um, is really a way of helping educators understand how to work with business and then model this within their curriculum. So you, as instructors who actually go through the same processes that you would be using with your students in conjunction with industry. So industry comes in as if you go back and forth with them working through all of this stuff. Yeah, it's not, it's not just in the classroom. We, we bring business business and industry representatives in, and that's a big piece of it, is, is you working with your business partners. You know, where are we going with this? What are we doing? And then you actually taking some of the concepts, modeling what it is you're trying to drive forward with your business partners, and your business partners give you immediate feedback with, mm, you know, that, that's not going to work for me. Or, yeah, right on. You know, but that whole interactivity Okay. So, this is the way we've done it. What if we shifted it and brought it about where when you are presenting your assignment to your student, don't simply hand it out to them on the end of the table, but present it to them. Hi, I'm Topher, newest associate chancellor at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I'm responsible for health and wellness here at the college. We employ thousands of staff and faculty. They are the lifeblood of our institution. We care about them and we'd like to do more for them. Chancellor asked me to develop a formal program of health and wellness for our staff. I've been working with the faculty council to develop a series of instructional lectures about diet and exercise. We're interested in adding a technology component to our program. We need a single page, bullet-oriented proposal. Your proposal should support your wellness program and focus on the subject of diet and or exercise. Your proposal should feature the development of an application using consumer computing devices, mobile phone, tablet, some kind of new gizmo that they're showing in Las Vegas, even as we speak, right? CES kicked off today, right? I think that's rude to coincide. We'll have to talk to, to, talk to James about that, okay? Key elements of a winning proposal. Concise explanation of how your application will support the mission of our project. A clear description of your application's features and benefits. An estimate of cost and time to develop. Very similar. Right? I mean, does everybody see the technical hard skills that are being presented in here? But this isn't just a piece of paper that's being handed down saying do this assignment. We've not only given them those technical aspects in there, but we've given soft skills which can be evaluated and, well, not only can be evaluated, but will be evaluated. That's another piece that I'm, I'll show you, okay? And 
Oh, okay. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do this. But the first aspect of this is teamwork, right? So if we wanted to do this, right, we'd break off three, 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 right? Break off into groups. This first one? Oh, that's right, because this was the evaluation one, huh? So everybody would go ahead, let's go ahead and do it. We can take that down to, well, thing two, five. Could you guys come up with a reasonable proposal based on those? Actually, it's the next one. Right there? In, say, five minutes? Concise explanation of how your application will support the mission, clear description of your application's features, estimate of the cost, and we're going to remove the one. Okay? No? Could you do it in 15? We know it can be done in 15 because we've done it several times. Okay? I'm not asking for a finished application, am I? No. I'm asking for a concept statement. Bulleted list. Okay? I was just discussing with another instructor out in the hallway. People have gotten so wrapped up. Obviously, this is a programming you know, problem that we're, we're putting here. People have gotten so wrapped up in the idea of programming is about writing code that they forget that programming has nothing to do with writing code. It has everything to do with solving a problem. How would you approach this as a problem? Right? There's no coding involved in this. None. Okay. Statement? Question? No, I was just going to make the comment that so go, go to the next week. So everybody does this. And then what happens with There we go. Short list selection. Right. So then people pick up and choose the best of the proposal within that community. And then those are brought forward. So the idea is for um for people to really understand the whole idea of user interface or usability or any of those types of things, that a lot of these concepts don't concentrate. I'm talking. Okay. You know what? So the idea is is that a lot of a lot of um, complaints that you get in, for example, computer science programs or whatever, is that they've never been client facing. And so this starts getting them into those types of experiences in a way that doesn't detract from them having to build some kind of a program or something like that. It just does it in a very different way. Does that make sense to people? And so it's extremely important to have students' experiences as they're going through their program to have to think differently about what they're doing in building that program. Because oftentimes, um, as Dave said, they go through and they code and they code and they code and they code and they code, but they don't know why they're coding in many ways. They know that they're able to code, they know they're able to do all sorts of really cool things with that code, but they haven't really understood how that applies to what they will do in the future. A discussion I just had with the colleague just before walking in here was that she's found that some of the hardest um, cells to students in programming classes are to students that have actually come through networking classes. And so she was trying to, to rationalize, well, why is that? Well, I gave her the idea because networking can be very reductionist in nature. Insert tab A into slot B and it works, right? Programming isn't like that. Programming is creative. Programming can take, as I said before, it has nothing to do with language. It's not language specific. It's problem specific. Any, any problem that you can create or code to get around, you can create or code in any other language. So it's, it's 
far less reductionist in nature, which I think is probably why she's seeing an issue. Mm -hmm. This was this was uh, an experience of a colleague out in the hallway, and we were just discussing it and and trying to come up with it. I I agree. I very much so. I wasn't I was not trying to allude to the fact that that networking is not a problem solving environment. I was simply pointing out that oftentimes solutions in networking are much more. Yeah, are, are much more structured to what you could find in a in a programming environment. Even so, we found that networking don't want to program. They want all the networking. They want to manage networks. They want to develop the infrastructure in the right way for the client. And they just don't have the it and they're pushing hard on that you know software defined networking at the user level is coming pretty quickly so it's, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting. Back to what we're talking about here, the, the concept really is, again, you know, how do, we, how do we portray or create those assignments that will really enable our students to, as the gentleman this morning um, alluded to, when you have somebody come up and say, okay, but why are you doing this? What is the benefit? What is the, the value to the, the business? If, if you can't answer that, you really got to wonder why. If we can bring some of that into a, a, an environment whereby our assignments are getting them into that business mindset, you know, we're, we're giving that leg up. There is quite a bit of front work on this because, generally speaking, most of us have those assignments like the, the PDF that I showed before, you know. And it's just a long way from there to here, okay? It's a long way from there to here. Um, a big piece of it is also in the form of evaluating those pieces that aren't tech. We tend to be fairly good at what we do in terms of evaluating the tech component. Okay? There are, this is just a very small sampling of rubrics out there that are available. Um, oral communication, integrative learning, inquiry and analysis. The whole idea of being able to take this large selection of rubrics, break it apart into its individual component pieces, and build your own rubric out of it to evaluate those pieces that you've added in. Okay. Um, yeah. So this may or may not have been the most ideal one to pick on. I just 
move the mouse. This particular one was inquiry and analysis. And it gives several different, I mean, it's a standard typical rubric, right? Um, design process. That could be very easily one that we would be able to incorporate into any of our assignments, right? The process of designing, whether it's a network, whether it's a program, whatever. We tend to have, from a technical aspect, we tend to have a very good picture of what needs to be incorporated in a design from the technical aspect. But what about the process of design? So in this case, all elements of the methodology or theoretical framework are skillfully developed. Appropriate methodology or theoretical frameworks may be synthesized from or across disciplines or from relevant sub-disciplines. Generally speaking, any kind of assignment, if, if you're truly looking at this from a business aspect or from the, the aspect of bringing the soft skills forward, there's going to be additional elements that need to come in, right? It's not just looking at it from the technical solution. It's also looking at it from, you know, how we're applying or putting together our particular solution. So this would give you, and again, these are not obvious. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of rubrics available out there. The idea here is, is to reach outside of the technical and into those other areas to bring those other aspects into your assignments. One of the things, I mean, I guess, uh, this is great, but it is difficult to not be able to speak to it. Mm -hmm. um, so now, you know, I'm trying to grade on the spelling, the right word. Because listening to reports, you can't establish, you can outline to someone that's grammatically incorrect. That's that's possible. That's possible. I find myself. How do you, how much time do you spend on on that part of it, and, and how do you correct people who aren't you know a lot of my students are fifteen, nineteen years old here to text. So spelling is is a choice. How many of you have used a business partner? You don't necessarily have to do it. The idea is tell your students they're presenting to your business partners. How many of you use your business partners in that way? They're not going to have spelling errors. They're not going to have grammatical errors if they know a business partner is coming in for that presentation. You would be shocked at the difference in quality that a student has when they're having to report to a business partner. And so one of the things that this, this model is how do you use business effectively? So in the course of the workshop, um, we bring business partners in, about one for every three, two or three faculty that we have in the workshop. And they have to give elevator pitches to each other. They have to talk about social media presence with each other. They have to look at all sorts of different things that make a difference within the context of that industry partner. They actually give a poster session at the end that shows how they are going to redo their curriculum to address the skill sets. You're going to show that, right? Um, I <laughs> I wasn't going to, but I can. Just say that one way that we do that is by having checkpoints. When they turn in the final products, they have like two or maybe three checkpoints. It gets graded on them. And let's face it, they want to get graded for most of them. So you have to take time the first time around, but after they get that first checkpoint back, and then we use that to compare it to the second one they turn in. I mean, they're not going to use those. 
important acronyms that we might see in a text message anymore because they know it's well, I, I see what you're saying, too, but I, I see that as a kind of a capstone kind of presenting to a project. But the other point is I see it as a layering process to a certain extent because to me, it'd be like asking a child to talk about money if they don't know numbers yet. And when you show that first Cisco assignment, that's the critical part of understanding Cisco. If they don't understand the Cisco terms yet, how can they then present anything to a business? So, see it as a layer of they got to know right. the lower end stuff. Now take the these things that you know, and now let's build on that. This has to be strategically right. That's what I was asking right. about. <laughs> right. Okay. In a two-year program, then, um, how and when and how are you there? Okay, so the very first experience to a business partner that they have is to give an elevator pitch on them. It has nothing to do with their course per se, unless they want to bring that into the elevator pitch. And so their first exposure to an industry partner is to just say, why should you hire me? And oftentimes that will get them motivated to sit there and try and figure out how to make a you know, good impression or how to practice that in a way that makes sense. And so that's why I said it's not technical at the very beginning. It's just, you know, and it takes literally one class period. We bring in a business partner, you know, you have 20 even if you have 30. You know, it's a one minute type of thing and you can easily do it. And I can guarantee you that the more often that it's heard, the better they get. And so it really gives a very different perspective. And so the idea is, is at the end of the semester, the business partner comes back because now they've had that exposure to them and then they will do something that is a little bit more technically oriented. We Does do that make get sense? Regulated. Okay. We do get regulated in the, in, in, the, in the course of a semester to the role of parent in that we are tuned out. Right? We all know that. I agree. It, and, and I would even go so far as to, okay, is it really my job to correct spelling and grammar? Yes. I'm a teacher. That is my job, though I'm a technical teacher, right, or material science major. I, you know, is it my forte? No, that's why I'm not an English teacher, right, specifically. But Deborah's right. You'd be amazed at how much presentation improves if it's taken out of the role of the classroom. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it really does, it, it makes them very aware of who, other than, if you will, the parent <laughs> that they're going to be, to be working with. You know, and it's, it's a critical aspect, and it can be done in a technical environment. It can be done in a technical setting. You emphasize that I want to emphasize that video clip. If you need to see that video clip that Chuck and Deborah presented on the computational thinking uh, skills workshop uh, earlier, excellent. Show that to your students the importance of what they're looking for. I mean, ultimately, we want to get this across to the students. That, that one quote there, we're not going to hire you if you do not have communication skills, critical thinking skills. And what that CEO said from Google, as well as I think it was IBM, is we're looking for their ability to critically think. I'm looking at some of these bulleted points in computational thinking logical thinking, strategizing, abstract thinking, procedural thinking. A lot of you have software backgrounds, you're programmers. You know, I taught microcode, assembly code for many years. And think of the algorithmic process or writing an algorithm. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about a particular language, but how would you write an algorithm to boil an egg? It's, 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 like the CEO said from Google, are they, what is their thought process, strategizing, logically thinking? Is it abstract? Is it realistic? Is it 
I like this iterative refinement. Are you going back and checking? Uh, are there checkpoints or breakpoints in the software? Uh, think about developing a flowchart. You're, you're forced to critically think. And if the students hear that from the very people that are going to hire them, communications, teamwork, uh, as, as they had just mentioned, it motivates these students to think about ultimately what are we here for? We're here to get a job based on what we're learning from your classes. And so ultimately what we want to do with these series of workshops is impress upon uh, faculty members to get that point across to the students that if you really want to get a job, you need to consider some of these soft skill attributes that we're bringing up. And we have many, many dozens and dozens brought in from workshops where uh, people from like yourself have given us in ranking order, uh, including our business and industry partners, what is vitally important to get the job beyond the technical skills, whether it's a certificate, a two-year degree, or a four-year degree. So you know, it seems to be a theme here, at least in the workshops that I'm conducting, and I'm really happy to see that, uh, though I would, you know, having taught over 20 years on technical subject matter, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a matter of being empathetic and mindful of the fact that if you really want your students to get a job, they really need to think about teamwork, effective communications. You got, we'd have stacks of, of engineering notebooks that we'd have to take home and do the grammatical checking and stuff like that. But uh, if the students know and they hear that, as Deborah mentioned, directly from the horse's mouth, uh, I think that's going to have a tremendous impact on them. One other quick comment before we go. Um, I wanted to go back to this one one minute because what I didn't say, which is very important in this, is remember you did the user needs assessment as part of this. What is very interesting here is they have to review it, make a short list selection, and define the success criteria for the um, selected proposal. What they're having to do is assess the quality of the things that they're looking at. So it helps them all of a sudden start thinking about, oh, what did I need to do to be better if theirs wasn't the best? And so they're having to put themselves in that other shoe to be able to figure out what makes a more successful product, you know, proposal, whatever. And so the more that you have them start looking at those types of things early, the better off they're going to be because it helps them articulate that within um, the business context as well. Because when these business partners would come in, they would ask students, well, what would you do to make this better? Or what would you do here? And they're now able to talk about those types of things because they've had to put themselves in that position. Make them give feedback. I mean, we're, we're trained to give feedback. Students are not. And the real world, business world, lives on feedback. Has got to drive it around. Yes, one of the things that I've tried to implement is um, when you're done with a project, you see a place to make why do you make those choices and how do you include those choices to affect the end result. So I, I, you, I thought about to give just here's an assignment, but Here's your sign that you finished it. Now think about what you've done in the choices that you've made. Because otherwise, their, their attention span just moves on to the next thing, and they don't really think about what they're doing critically. They don't have to really go back and say, well, why did I make this choice? Were those the best choices? So I said, I think that was it. Yeah. Yeah, here's the value. I don't, I, I, I haven't talked to the peers and what they do in the world. Question for you. Do you evaluate the peers' evaluation of the original student's work? So I submit my work, you evaluate my work to the peer, do you evaluate his evaluation? Most people don't get feedback on how well they're evaluating somebody else's stuff. 
And that's something that we, it has to be also incorporated into this. <laughs> not, to, not to throw a wrench at you, but, but kind of to throw a wrench at you, you know. Oh, we're running out of time. Um, so, you know, the whole idea here, again, is, okay, I'm going to admit it right up front. Is it more work? Yeah. It's more work. Is it as much work as it would be if you said, okay, you have to start teaching soft skills? No, I don't think so. I think that it is a, a, a fairly good middle step where if we can start, first of all, in ourselves, making sure that we are in fact showing and patterning and modeling these skills, and secondly, ensuring that the assignments that we are going to, most of them, most of them we probably already have the assignment. So it, it's not a creation, it's a modify, right? Twist the assignment just a little bit to change the context of how we're delivering it. Leverage the use of our business partners in the classroom, out of the classroom. Most business partners, we've discovered, don't simply want to be sounding boards for potential curriculum. They really do want to be involved in the classroom. No, you're not seeing that? See, I, we see that all the time. We really do. We, we see that you know, far, far and away. They, they do want to be involved in that, in that process. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't have an answer for that. I mean, I want the politically incorrect answer? Because many people do not use data to make their decisions on their programs. And oftentimes what it is is a financial decision and business programs tend to be more expensive to run and therefore they often, you know, are, are taken away or um, lessened in order to cut costs, period. Because they don't know any better. It's a very simple answer. Because they think computer science is all encompassing. If you look at a lot of these types of things, and 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 let me, and we're running out of time. So um, many employers were in an era where computer science was the only degree. They didn't have a lot of these other degrees. Um, and a lot of times, so for example, in Boston, we did a lot of updating employers that an IT degree is not just desktop support. You know, that it's not a certificate that there is actually a degree that has various concentrations that has all of these requirements and outcomes in it. 
that was something that they were not familiar with. They do it because that's a very familiar thing to them. Computer science is 30 years old or so. Um, IT is, was, became a discipline, I think, five years ago. Um, so. Thank you.